Hello and welcome to Mind Over Matter. I'm Joe Wilmot. And I'm James Fiara. On today's show, we dive into how the media impacts our mental well-being. Coming up, we look at the danger surrounding online self-diagnosis. We have a live Skype call with Gemma Heaton from Reset, the happiness project. And Sean takes a trip to the cobbles to talk all things Corey. And finally, Dan conducts his own review on some of the most popular mindfulness apps. Welcome to Mind Over Matter. Now, media has always played a part in the perception of mental health, and more recently, the conversation has turned to whether social media is further affecting the current mental health epidemic. Uh, now, if you do want to get in touch with us today, you can go to the usual socials, just search Mind Over Matter. We also want you to send in your favourite picture of your happy place at Mind Over Matter or email, and we'll have a look at them at the end of the show. But first, with one in four of us using the internet to self-diagnose physical and mental health issues, are we really aware of the dangers of online self-diagnosis? Here to chat with us about it, we have Ellie Murphy, who is a stand-up comedian who uses it as a coping mechanism when dealing with her mental health, and our own reporter, Sean Carey. Now, to kick us off, let's take a look at how the internet is being used to self-diagnose. Some really shocking statistics in there. Um, Ellie, I'm gonna to come to you first. Now, do you think that it's shocking that one in four people are using the internet to self-diagnose? Um, I wouldn't really think it's that bad just because I think there can be a lot of useful self-help resources online as well, specifically like Mind. I think if you look in the right places, you can find some really helpful stuff. Have you personally ever used search engines to self-diagnose anything, if you've ever been curious about anything in particular? Um, yeah, I've sort of looked into what exactly anxiety is and that kind of thing, but I wouldn't necessarily self-diagnose myself. I think that's meant for a GP. And Sean, why do you think that people believe that Google is a better search engine and tool to use than just contacting their local GPs to find out anything? I think it comes from people might have a very wrong kind of impression of mental health and there's an element of shame that comes with it and some people might think that it's not worth seeing a GP as opposed to like a physical illness which they need to get out of that mindset and we need to really focus on destigmatizing mental health so that people do go to the GP for help because that's where they're going to get the best help and it's going to be on record then mm -hmm. as opposed to you know some internet search history on Google. Yeah and so some people do use Google but then there are other people who also just use social medias like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to talk about their mental health issues. Do you think that social media is a good platform for things like that again or do you think going to the GP would be a better option there? I think it's a useful coping mechanism, but I don't think it's the right place to diagnose yourself. I think that that has to be done by a medical professional. Definitely. Um, thank you all very much for your input there. Uh, now, it's time to talk to a lady who runs her own online business, helping people to cope with their mental health. Uh, hello, Gemma. Thank you very much for joining us. Hi. Um, Hi. So just very quickly explain to us what, uh, what it is that you do. So we've got a group which is very much a community really, um, a lot of it is done on Facebook um, but it is just a brand new way of doing it. A lot of the things that you do see on social media are really quite negative um, and this group is really about 
promoting positive mental health and being a support system, but it's something that is very, very different to the usual things that you see on Facebook and social media. Um, it is very much a community, if that makes sense, uh, where there's always someone there to, to help somebody else to lift them up. It's really refreshing. That's why we even came up with the name Reset, because we're trying to really move away from the stigma of mental health, really, and put a really fresh perspective on it. Yeah, and people seem to be depending more and more on social media these days with yeah, this, Gemma. Do. Have you seen a rise in the number of clients, and why do you think that would be? I've seen a huge rise um, in the number of people that are, are accessing the page. Um, I think a lot of it is to do with um, people feel open to talk on there um, without being judged uh, by other family members or other friends. Um, everybody in there is is in the same boat, really. They're all wanting the same sort of thing. Um, so there is no judgment there. And a lot of it is coming from word of mouth. When people are becoming open about it and talking about the struggles, um, it's becoming a lot more acceptable. Um, and people are beginning to talk about it and the word spreading and more and more people are wanting to join in. Um, and it is becoming, like I said before, a lot more recognised and accepted. Um, but pressures, everyday pressures are just on the rise. So people are struggling a lot more um, with these pressures and are struggling with everyday life. Um, and it's just a little bit of an escape, but it's a place where they're free and open to share their journeys and to really discuss like the troubles and the battles and yeah. to put a new perspective on it. So final question then overall, is your opinion on social media a positive one or a negative one or both? It is both. I think a lot you do see a lot of um, I do a lot of negative things on social media, but what is refreshing about this group is that everything in there is really really positive. Mm. Um, so I would say the overall positive because we're able to reach thousands of people across the world yeah. and help so many more people um, without having the backlash that is usually associated with social media. So I would overall say positive. Yeah, no, that makes absolute sense. Well, yeah. that's incredible. Thank you so much for that, Gemma. But unfortunately, that's all we have time for. But thank you very much again for joining us. With today's technology becoming more advanced by the day, app creators have started to develop mindfulness apps for quick ease and easy access on the go. Uh, the smartphone downloads are designed to help with well-being on a daily basis through guided meditation techniques. And what we did was we set down the task of uh, looking into these apps to see what the benefits are from using them. Here's what he thought. So I'm going to be downloading about three apps and testing them for the next week and a half. All these apps claim to do the same thing in slightly different ways. So, let's find out if they really do work. Now I've got this absolutely brilliant app on my phone called eMoods. What it does is it helps you track your emotions, your high moods, your low moods, your irritability and your anxiety and shows it in this very simple four dot system. Now the Uplay app has quite a lot of things like I said, but one thing it does have and that I haven't done yet because I really wanted to do it in front of the camera um, when I knew I had the time, which is a personality test. You're always prepared, disagree. You get stressed out easily, agree. I got the activist. Um, enthusiastic, creative, free spirit who enjoys keeping the options open rather than planning. Finally, the last app, uh, and the one that I will probably be keeping is Yupa. It's like having a counsellor in your pocket that you can grab out at any point and just talk your way through the situation. Hmm, they are pretty good apps and there are more on the market. Are they better than a doctor? I'll leave that question up to you. We now have Dan here in the studio who is going to answer some questions from our lovely studio audience. So Dan, what questions have we got today? Uh, so has anybody got any questions at all? Yeah, yourself. So did using any of the apps make you feel any different? Um, I wouldn't say they made me feel any different. They definitely helped with different situations, but they're not, you know, they're not medication and they're not a doctor. They're not going to completely change the way that you feel. Um, but yeah, they do help. So that's a plus. Any more questions at all? Yeah. So what sort of mental health issues can these apps deconstruct? Um, I don't think there's any sort of specific um, mental health issues that they can deconstruct. Um, they help 
just in general, like the sort of basic bits, the focusing, working out what's going on in your head, all of that, they're, again, they're not medication. So they're not going to de completely deconstruct everything. They're just to help, you know, settle it a little bit and sort of make you think more about what's happening rather than just letting it happen. Any other questions? Yeah. So out of all the apps, which one was your favorite to use? Um, out of all the apps, probably uh, Yupa. Yupa is one of the, it was the only app where you didn't have to go back every single day to make it work. The other apps, you have to use them every single day for them to work the way they need to work. Whereas this one, you can just jump on when you need to, when you need that little bit of support. Um, and it's just there and it works exactly the same way, no matter what's happening. Yeah. Cheers, Dan. Thank you very much for that. And thank you all very much for your questions. Uh, now let's move on to the penultimate part of today's show. We sent Sean over to Weatherfield to talk all things Coronation Street and to find out the importance of mental health within soap operas and the media. Hello, I'm here at Coronation Street in Media City where I'll be talking to Chief Publicity Manager Alison Sinclair about all things Corry. Let's go. Hello Alison, lovely yeah, to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, welcome to the Bistro. Thank you, I can't believe I'm on the famous set of Coronation yeah, Street. That's great. Um, can we go straight in with the questions? Certainly can. So from a press perspective, how long do you know about a storyline before it airs? So I'm currently working on storylines that are going to go on screen in April. So this is now nearly December. So I'm normally about four months in advance with a broad view of what's going on. This year's storylines have had a huge focus on mental health, particularly in men. We've had Aidan Connor's suicide and David Platt's rape. Um, obviously these are quite sensitive storylines and I was wondering if that changed your approach when relaying these stories to the press. So men's mental health was really um, a big issue this year um, and the producer, the then producer, Kate Oates, really wanted to focus on storylines that sort of highlighted men's mental health. So we had three storylines. We had um, the OCD storyline with Craig, we had David Drape and we had Aidan's suicide. Um, normally we are quite cagey about our storylines and we try to, you know, surprise the viewers and we want them to sort of watch and see things unfold and not necessarily know what's going to happen. You can't really do that with storylines like that because you have a real duty of care to actually let people know what is coming up because they're going to be affected by it. They may have been affected by it in, in their own life. So, you know, the storylines are really, really important ones. How vital is it that Coronation Street does the story justice? Really, really important that... Um, Soap operas reach so many people. You know, you, you, you've sat in the doctors and seen leaflets about suicide or, you know, rape crisis or, you know, mental health issues, cancer, various different storylines. How many times do people actually pick them up? They don't. And you'll walk out of there, even if it's something that maybe might be affecting you or someone in your family, you wouldn't necessarily look at it. What happens when a soap opera does a storyline like that is it brings it into your living room and it sparks a conversation. And if you're sparking a conversation, that means that people are opening up. And certainly th throughout the Aiden storyline, the number of people who actually wrote into us saying that a family member, a male family member, which was obviously the crucially important of it, had actually opened up and said that they recognised how he was feeling and spoke out for the first time. You can't underestimate how important that is. Amazing, thank you very much, Alison. No worries, thank you. Thank Lovely you. to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Oh, Sean, it's like you've had an amazing time on the cobbles there. Uh, if you do want to view the full interview, head over to channel4.com forward slash mind over matter. And if you are affected by any of the topics mentioned in today's show, you can get support and advice at channel4.com forward slash mind over matter, as you can see on the screen there. So to finish the show, let's take a look at some of your happy place photos we asked you to send over at the beginning of the show. Here they're coming up. This is me with my family on holiday this year in Corfu. Ooh, my happy place is with my family. Well, Aisha, I agree. Holidays and families, definitely. Um, we've got one here from at Charwells97. Uh, Main stage at Leeds Fest. So many different people in one place enjoying loads of different music. It's just therapy for my soul, even if I am wrecked. Preach. Oh, and my happy place is my car, as I can get from A to B without the hassle of public transport. Dan, MUFC92, says, I don't have a car, so I can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks beautiful. It's definitely, that looks like it's definitely here in the UK. My happy place is Tattersall Lakes with family and friends. There's something about the beautiful scenery and hot tub that makes me feel calm. 
That's Emma Norton on Facebook. That looks like my happy place as well. And unfortunately, that's all that we have time for today and this week's Mind Over Matter. Join us next week when we will talk all things sport. Good, Good night. night.